as we come together during this season of Thy Kingdom Come between Ascension and Pentecost to pray together and to share in some reflections together on the Lord's Prayer. Well, we're all trying to be pretty creative at the moment, aren't we, and trying to work out ways of meeting online with people. And uh, in this last week or so, we've managed to get some of our families together uh, to join together for a messy church session in which we introduce Thy Kingdom Come to them. And we ask them to pray and we just ask them to make, uh, we were all doing this online together, um, some origami hearts inside which um, they put the name of someone that they wanted to pray for. And we encourage them to make five of them. Um, and I've asked them to pray every day for each of those five people. And we were talking about the fact that actually to pray for someone is a sign of our love for them. A sign that uh, we want God to bless them because we love them and we believe that God loves them too. So whether or not we've made a heart or whether we've used a piece of string, and this is mine, um, we can come together at the beginning of each of these sessions and just take a moment to pray for each of our five people. So I'll lead you in a prayer. Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the face of Jesus Christ, your light and glory have blazed forth. Send your Holy Spirit that I may share with my named friends or my named family the life of your Son and your love for all. Strengthen me as a witness to that love as I pledge to pray for them for your name's sake. Amen. So I hope you'll continue to pray for all your five folk over this next few days and weeks and who knows months, but just keep them in mind and pray for them often. Well, today's reflection is on the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, or your kingdom come, your will be done. And I wonder what God's kingdom looks like to you. I suspect that for many of us, when we think about a kingdom, we think about territory and borders, a kind of defined geographical area. And yet that's not the picture that we have in God's kingdom. The picture is set out for us in the life of Jesus and right through the Old Testament. In the book of Isaiah, we read many prophecies and towards the end, we read prophecies of a new heaven and a new earth. And Isaiah prophesies right at the end of, uh, in chapter 65, he writes this, Never again will there be an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. They will build houses and live in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Now that for me gives a simple picture of health for young and old, of fulfilling work that prospers, and of lives that do not succumb to the ravages of war. Basic elements of a good life, a simple vision of a simple fulfilled life that, to be honest, many across our world would not recognise. God's kingdom is one of justice. It is one of abundant life, of forgiveness, of sacrificial love and peace. It is one of kindness and compassion. It is one of giving. giving. And it is a kingdom that has a ruler, an anointed one, one who came to set things right and to enable us to be back in right relationship with God and a whole relationship with God. The king that came wasn't one we might have expected. He wasn't a powerful warrior. He was but a humble, gentle servant who brought justice to the nations at the cost of his own suffering and death on the cross. He was the one who came to bring good news came to proclaim freedom, 
a recovery of sight to the blind. He came to set the oppressed free. This king, of course, was Jesus. And in his life and ministry, we saw glimpses of the kingdom of God. As people were healed, miracles happened. Prevailing beliefs were challenged. The marginalised were given a new voice. And it was a, a, a kingdom he came to bring in that brought justice. We saw a king in Jesus with a servant heart, so different to the way that the world sees kingship. Our God is different. He humbled himself and came to us. God made man. You know, the kingdom of God is one that seeks wholeness and well-being. It is a kingdom that stands for justice, and we have a king who came to serve. And so what is our place in praying, your kingdom come, your will be done? Well, simply this, perhaps two things, but I'm sure you can think of more. This is a very layered um, phrase. Well, first of all, that we live in the now and the not yet of the kingdom of God. Paul writes in the book of Romans, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And we see that, don't we? In the suffering, the lack of justice in the world, the lack of care for this beautiful world in which we live. And yet amidst all of it, we do see glimpses of the kingdom of God breaking in. We see miracles of healing. We see people showing love at cost to themselves. We see people striving for justice. We see people who will forgive others in really extreme circumstances. They are signs of the breaking in of God's kingdom. And as we pray, we ask God to use us to bring in that kingdom. We pray that we might be distinctive. We pray that we might be agents and ambassadors of God's healing presence in our world. And in praying, secondly, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we need to keep clearly before us a vision of what we can be as God's people, of how we can be ambassadors and agents of the bringing in of that kingdom. And we need to keep praying and keep that vision before us that one, one day we'll see not just a glimpse of that kingdom, but of his kingdom in all its fullness. And so as we ponder on that, we might want to ask ourselves a question. I'll just give us a minute or two, perhaps, to just listen to some music that hopefully you will recognise but how can you, how can I be someone who brings in the kingdom of God? What is the task that God has equipped us for? To show people that the kingdom of God is real and is truly among us.
And so shall we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope that you find this next few days enriching as we approach Pentecost. So God bless to everyone and lots of love to everyone. Bye.